So I'm talking about common traps and not so common pathologies in the cellar and supracellar nutrition. The cellar region houses the master gland pituitary, its stalk and hypothalamus and is a complex anatomic location with MRI being the most important modality for evaluation. Pituitary adenomas or pitnet compromise 90% of the diagnosed cellar regions while the remaining uncommon or less typical at primarily intracellar or supracellar location include the inflammatory pathologies like lymphocytic hypophysitis, neurosarcoidosis, neoplastic like bad case sepsis, astrocytomas, primary CMS lymphomas, meningioma, germ cell tumors or metastasis, and of vascular origin like aneurysm, hemangioma, and are the point of discussion here where errors in imaging differentiation are relatively common. It is necessary to consider the possibility of occurrence of these lesions as it can alter the course of management like using a totally different approach to surgery in gliomas or possibly even avoid surgery like in case of hypophysitis. Diagnostic approach and accurate correlation with history is of prime importance. 33-year-old female presenting with diarrhea, and occasional headaches, no menstrual irregularities with increased levels of prolactin, T2-weighted Images show an iso intense mass with a hyper intense nodule within. On post contrast, it is showing heterogeneous enhancement with non enhancing nodule. The stock is thickened of approximately 6.1 mm. Posterior pituitary bright spot is preserved on T1 images. Now, a pituitary adenoma or hypophysitis and close mimickers here. If there is asymmetrical enlargement of the gland, it is pointing towards adenomas. If there is symmetrical enlargement, it points towards hypophysitis. Features like widening of cell atorsica, heterogeneous enhancement, point towards adenomas. While features like stop thickening, posterior pituitary bright spot loss, and paracellar dark T2 sign if present, points towards hypophysitis. In this patient, a young female with obvious stop thickening, symmetrical enlargement, and intense post contrast enhancement, a diagnosis of lymphocytic hypophysitis was made. Patient was started by steroids and on follow-up MRI showed regression in cells. Case 2 is of a 29-year-old female presenting with amenorrhea, infertility and loss of weight since 6 months. History of diminution of vision in bilateral eyes present. The anterior pituitary hormones are low. High CRP and ESR levels are noted. Prolactin cortisol is normal. On T2, T1 weighted images, there is a cellar mass with a hypointense nodule within. T2 is hyperintense. On post contrast, it is showing homogeneous enhancement with stock thickening of approx 5 mm. The posterior pituitary bright spot is not seen on T1 weighted images, but there is a striking nodular enhancement of the thalamus triad vessels in the ganglio-capsular region. On diffusion weighted images, there is no restriction in diffusion seen, and the left optic nerve is showing a signal, an abnormal T2 hyperintense signal. Uh, in the super chiasmatic part and no patty meningeal enhancement is however seen. There were two differentials of neurosarcoidosis and lymphoma based on few studies that have described neurosarcoidosis presenting as neurolymphomatosis. The features considered were homogeneous contrast enhancement, stock thickening, nodular perivascular enhancement and the left optic nerve signal. Angiocentric lymphoma was also considered owing to nodular perivascular enhancement and the optic nerve involvement, but there was no diffusion restriction and that would help us rule out. However, typical features of neurosarcoid like pachymeninger enhancement, diffusion restriction with significant drop on ADC are absent, no hilar lymphadenopathy or lung parenchyma involvement on HRCT, a transpenoidal biopsy of the lesion was done which confirmed the diagnosis of neurosarcoidosis. Case 3 is of a 25-year-old male presenting with gradual onset of monocranial headache and blood vision since 5 months. On T1 sagittal images, we can see a heterogeneous solid cystic T1 uh, isointense mass which is hyperintense on T2 with cystic areas within showing intense enhancement on contrast. On MR spectroscopy, it showed choline and NA peaks. The pituitary gland and the distal stalk are seen separately from the lesion. It is seen to compress the lateral ventricle with resultant hydrocephalus and dilatation of uh, ventricles. Uh, on T1 and flare images, if we compare the size of the lesion on T1 and on flare is approximately the same, thus showing that it is showing a non-infiltrative pattern. There is abutment of the chiasma anteriorly, however, no neural nodule within a cyst sign is seen here. It is a high-grade or a low-grade gland. 
it is important to distinguish because in adults it is uncommon to have a pilocytic astrocytoma in that location however a non infiltrative pattern intense enhancement and no dissemination in the cord points towards low grade gliomas like pilocytic astrocytomas classic features of a cystic mass with a neural nodule is absent. This was confirmed on histopath and tumor resected with three images. Case 4 is of a 31 year old male presenting with chronic headache, not related with symptomatic treatment, no other symptoms are present. On T1 sagittal images, we can see a figure of 8 appearance here, which is iso intense to green matter. On T2 weighted images, it is iso intense, but there is a hypo intense nodule within the lesion. On post contrast sequences, we can see that the normal Pituitary is seen compressed against the cell posteriorly. The chiasma and the tracts are normal. This is a claw sign that has been described here. Now, again, there are two differentials, macroadenomas or rat case clepsis. Now, macroadenomas were present with fluid fluid levels. Intracystic nodule is common in rat case clepsis. T2 intensities can be variable owing to the different protein contents. Pituitary and its stalk, if seen separately and usually compressed posteriorly, then it points towards rat case clepsis. Here, an intracystic nodule is there. There are obvious, uh, no obvious endocrine symptoms and a peripherally enhancing rim that is the claw sign seal. So it points towards rat case lexis. Case 5 of a 14-year-old male child presenting with short stature features of hypogonadism, low levels of T3, cortisol, and ACTH, GH was low, insulin normal. Here we can see that the anterior pituitary is small in size, the stalk is absent, and there is an abnormal location of the posterior pituitary bright spot seen at the base of the third ventricle. Is it an ectopic posterior pituitary? It would point toward pituitary stock interruption syndrome, which is a rare syndrome with incidence of 0.5 per 1 lakh life births with a trial of MRI findings of interrupted pituitary stock, hypoplastic anterior pituitary, and ectopic posterior pituitary bright spot. This patient fits into this diagnosis. However, the occurrence of bright spot is diagnostic and should not be missed. How do we approach these cellar and supracellular pathologies? Identify the cellar torsica and the gland, determine epicenter of the lesion, whether it is cellar, paracellar, or supracellar, analyze the lesion morphology, signal intensity, solid, cystic, low voice, bone involvement, calcification, enhancement, then come down to specific characters like paracellar, dark T2 sign, claw sign, nodular vascular enhancement, vacuum manager enhancement, which would confirm the diagnosis and surgical planning. There is a quick summary of the mimickers of this not so common pathologies where differentiating characteristics are listed with the common mimickers of these pathologies. In conclusion, we can say that MRI can be accurately used to identify the origin of the lesion, whether it is coming from the pituitary or it is separate, the type of enhancement, enlargement of the cella, stock thickening, presence of the bright spot, intracystic nodule, leptomeningeal environment, complete systemic evaluation are important differentiators in diagnosis. Classic features like T2, dark sign, diffusion restriction, neural nodule releases sign, figure of 8 configuration may be absent or even if it is present, it can be misleading. When lesions are large, like rat case lepsis or meningioma, they may displace or obliterate the gland itself, making differentiation from adenomas and determine whether it is a cellar or extracellular pathology difficult. History is of prime importance in arriving at the diagnosis. Thank you.